Okay, so in this video, we're going to be having a look at a difficult question involving the sine and the cosine rule. Now, throughout this video, I'm going to be using the formulas, um, which you'll need to know well. So I will link the videos on the sine rule and the cosine rule in the description. So make sure you check those out if you need them. So before we get started, if you want to pause this video and have a go, then feel free to have a go and then follow along with me. But otherwise, I'm just going to quickly show you where you can go about finding those additional videos to make sure that you're perfectly happy with the sine and cosine rule. So when you're on one of these videos, if you click into the description, you'll see that I've got everything listed within there. I've got hard questions to try, I've got checklists and practice papers that you can download, and other questions and other videos within this series. Now if you scroll down to the bottom of the description, you'll see down there, it says topics featured in this video. So in there, I'll put all the links with difficult questions and topic videos related to this topic right there for you to access. So just click onto one of those and it'll take you on to more practice questions and different versions of this topic. So with that being said, let's get started. Now what we have is a problem here with two triangles put together and it says work out the length of A to D which is this length just here let's label it X. It says give your answer to three significant figures and that's all that we have. So in order to get that can we use and obviously when these two triangles are put together like this it's normally a hint that we're not going to be able to get the, that length straight away but if we actually have a look at that triangle we have that length which is opposite 86 and we've got the 11.4 on that triangle so we need another bit of information we'd either need another angle say this one or this one which would allow us to use the sine rule because we'd have two pairs of opposites or we would need this length just here and that would allow us to use the cosine rule as we have we would have the two adjacent sides to the 86 so I think that's the way we're going to have to go here because if we look we should be able to get that missing side from the triangle below. So again, let's have a look and see if we can use the sine rule. Well, we have a side opposite the 109, and the side we're looking for is opposite the 34. So we can definitely use the sine rule. So I'm gonna label up the sides. Now, I, I like to use A and B only, so I'm gonna leave that big B where it is and label this as little b, and I'm gonna change this C into a big A, and the side I'm looking for, we'll call that little a. So putting that into the sine rule, so the sine rule is A over sine big A is equal to B over sine big B. So if we put these pieces in straight away, we get A over sine of the opposite angle, so that was 34, and that is equal to B, which we've got labelled as 12.5, over sine of the opposite angle, which is 109. So we have one step to rearrange that to get our answer for that missing side length in the middle of the two triangles. And I can do that by multiplying sine 34 to the other side. Now when we do that, sine 34 will just go up onto the numerator. Of course you could work that side out and then multiply it by sine 34, but I prefer just to stick it on the top next to the 12.5. So we have 12.5 sine 34 all over sine 109. So there we go. If we type that into our calculator, putting our fraction button in and putting everything just like that on the top and the bottom, we get A is equal to, we get quite a long decimal here. Now it says three significant figures, so let's give it to at least seven, uh, with six or seven, I'll go for seven. So 7.39265. And then 7.4, we'll stop there and that is going to be plenty. Okay, so let's label that on the diagram. So this length here is that 7.39 number. I'm just going to put that there so it doesn't clog up the diagram too much. Now I can move onto the triangle above. So now, because I have that missing side in the middle of the two triangles, we can think now, can I use the sine or cosine rule? Obviously we've already established that at the start, but let's just 
quickly see why we can't use the sine rule. We've got one pair of opposites here, we don't have one there, and we don't have one here. So unless I wanna try and keep going and potentially try and find another pair of opposites, then I'm gonna check the cosine rule. So we're looking for the side opposite 86, so this would be my big A and little a, and I now have the two adjacent sides. So this would be B and this would be C. So I definitely can use the cosine rule. So I'm gonna put this into the cosine rule, which is A squared equals, and then we have B squared plus C squared, so 11.4 squared plus the 7.39 number squared. And we're working out, I'm just gonna put that, but I'm gonna use this full number just here. And then it's minus 2BC cos big A. So minus two times B, which is 11.4, times the C, which is the 7.39 number. It's gonna be awkward to keep typing that in. And then we have cos of the big A, so cos of 86. So that is what I need to type into the calculator. So if we type that all in, we get, uh, and well, we get an answer, but that is gonna be an answer for A squared. Now, I want to get the answer just for A, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it all under the square root. Of course, you can type that all in and then press square root answer, and that's probably the way most people are gonna to prefer to do it. So I'm just gonna write that A is gonna be equal to the square root of the answer. And when we type that all in, we get 13.147 and then I get 39. Again, a few more decimals, but it did only say it wants my answer to three significant figures. So I kept my working to around seven significant figures and now I've got an accurate answer here that I can round to make sure that I didn't get any rounding errors along the way. So one, three, one, one is the third significant figure. It's a four after the one, so it's not gonna round up. So my final answer will be 13.1, and that's in centimeters. So there we go, there's my final answer, using the sine rule to start with, and then using the cosine rule on my second triangle. So there we go, don't forget, I will link all the videos in the description for the sine and cosine rule. So don't forget to check those out. I hopefully you found this video useful and helpful. If you did, don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, and don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you for the next one.